Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. Got a really fun YouTube video for you here. A walkthrough of the equipment line uh, from the late Wilton Bunkies estate in Rushford, Minnesota. And you're looking at a picture here. Of, that's Kathy Eide and her late father, Wilton Willie Bunky. Um, and I was able to go down to Rushford, Minnesota uh, recently to get an up-close look at the equipment that they'll have selling on our Machine Repeat monthly online auction next Tuesday, April 19th. Uh, Kathy reached out to us and uh, said they have some equipment they're looking to sell, and we were able to connect them, work with one of our uh, great certified auction partners, Hamilton Auction Company, out of Dexter, Minnesota. Andrew Hamilton and the crew there do an awesome job. So they were able to go get all the information and all the pictures on the equipment, and I tagged along and... Uh, did a little fun interview. Now, you maybe saw on our TV show, the Machine Repeat TV Auction Edition, which is airing on RFD this week. It aired on Tuesday, uh, yesterday on Thursday, and again uh, tomorrow on Saturday, previewing the auction on Tuesday, again April 19th. And uh, we were able to use some of the interviews that I shot over in Rushford. Now, this is uh, Kathy's son, Travis Eide, and, uh, and then also Travis's son, Tucker. So Tucker is the great one of the great grandchildren of, of the late Willie Bunky, and Willie was a kind of a legendary figure here in Southeast Minnesota with his equipment business, Bunky Sales, and a great fun again to get an up close look at the equipment and learn a little bit more from Kathy about her dad, uh, Willie Bunky. Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. I'm just down the road in Rushford, Minnesota today. Uh, I tell you what, really cool story here. I'm with Kathy Eide. Kathy, good to see you again. Nice and to see you too. Kathy had reached out and uh, the family had some machinery looking to sell on our Machine Repeat monthly online auction. Um, Kathy, your, your father, uh, Willie Bunky, had passed away, just was it back in December? Yes, December 12th. Okay. So, so he was 93 years old 93. Uh, when he passed away and he was able to live at home the whole while. So he was pretty wow. excited about that. Yeah. So he had a very good life. Well, and, and folks around Southeast Minnesota, Wisconsin, Northern Iowa, uh, I'm sure remember Bunky Sales, Rushford, Minnesota, uh, yes. a dealership your father operated uh, up the road in Hart. Correct. And, and also right here in Rushford? Yes. Okay. Yep. For, that was for many years, wasn't it, Kathy? Many years, yep. Okay. So Dad actually started out um, selling uh, Rochester silos. That okay. was his uh, first uh, sales gig, uh, okay. I guess. Sure. And then he went on to uh, take on uh, WIC and Hool equipment. So sure. Dad loved sales. He loved people working with people, working yes, with did. farmers? Yes. Awesome. Well, I remember when I started 32 years ago, I remember looking in the agri news and the, the land, the local ag papers and, and seeing uh, bunky sales. So, um, and folks will shortly here, we'll go out and look at some of the equipment on the sale. But Kathy, you have some amazing materials here uh, about your father uh, and he went by Willie? Yes. Okay. And let's just uh, take a little look here. Now you were saying your sister, Kath, or your sister put together a lot of the information? Yeah, Kathy? yeah, I have uh, one sister that was always very good about taking pictures and putting together books for dad and nice. for all of us, so it was uh, and how many it's kids? fun. Nine. You're one Mom and dad nine. had nine children, okay. yes. Where are you in the line? I'm a middle child. You're middle? Yeah, okay. that's why I'm so scrappy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's take a look here, so. Uh, so one of the articles I had uh, found uh, was one for dad when uh, he had won um, uh, JC's, an award from JC's for Outstanding Young Farmer. That was in 1958, 58. I believe. This is a picture of the young family? Yes. Funky family. That's your dad and mom there and the yep. kids? Yep, and a sub, uh, several of the kids. I was not born yet at that point. Kathy was not quite on the scene. No, I was not on the scene there. Well, actually. Or maybe you are. Yes, not showing, they say, <laughs> not showing our Catherine. Cindy and a few other well, ones. Where was Kathy? I don't know. I must have been Missy Aiden that day, so I didn't get to be in the picture. Well, so you said fifty-eight. Yeah, it looks like uh, the picture was uh, taken in, uh, yep, nineteen fifty-eight. Okay. Wow. Well, Young Sorry farmer, JC Award here in Rushford, Minnesota. Very cool. Yep. And um, so then you have some books here, Kathy. What are these, uh, yeah. these books? So uh, one of my sisters, like I said, she's so awesome about putting together books of dad. And she actually had somebody come down 
and write Dad's story, mm. and uh, had the Wilton Bunky remembers. So uh, wow. this is my dad on his favorite horse. Huh. That was uh, when uh, about the time that I think he uh, asked my mom or was dating my mother. Okay. So. And you both your folks they're they're from were from Rushford area. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So in the book, it's it's an amazing book. Um, it tells about Dad's uh, life as a, a young boy, mm. and uh, although Dad had gone through a lot of tragedies, uh, his he was always happy. Mm. Um, I I can't say enough good things about Dad and his his uh, personality. So he was born uh, in 1929. Of 29. Okay. Yep, and like the, right before the depression. Right. Yeah. He said, uh, I really didn't care much for school the first years. I guess I felt I had more important things I needed to be doing at home. Mm. By the time I got to Hart, I had a really good teacher and enjoyed school from there on. Mm. And so, again, Hart is a little community right up the road here from Rushford. Right. So here's a picture of my dad. Good looking young guy. Yeah. Young Willie. Uh, it goes on to talk a little bit about his um, dad and what he did um, uh, back then, and I'm not going to go into his uh, backstory uh, a little bit. Very cool family uh, heirloom to put together to, to have for for you and future generations. Yeah, it is. To have about your dad, that's cool. So, um, well, and I guess I maybe should say, so my dad had gone through some tragedy uh, when he was uh, quite young. Yeah. And his father, um, they were doing some work for a farmer. Okay. And um, for some reason, they got in an argument. His dad and this uh, farmer got in an argument, and the farmer came out and shot my father. I remember you. Or my father's that. dad. And then he came after uh, my dad's brother mm. and shot him too. And your, so, your dad was a young little guy, and he was there? He was there. And uh, wow. he saw the whole thing. In fact, he ran to get help and to hide. Um, wow. So he saw the whole thing. And wow. But you said despite... Despite that, I he mean, was always he was out. always happy. He, he always, he never let that be the focus of his life, the dip, you know, the difficulties in life, so. And Kathy, I know your son and grandson, who we'll, we'll visit with here in a bit, they, they were mentioning the same thing about their grandpa, great-grandpa, that mm -hmm. he was always smiling. He was yep, like, Every always day was smiling. a good day. Uh, every day is a good day. Wow. Yep, wow. yep. So different well, pictures of my mom and my mom and dad when they got married. And uh, it was love at first sight. And mm. one of the interesting things dad always said is the, the best thing a father can give to their children is to love their mother. Wow, isn't that the truth? I know. And wow. uh, they truly did. Mm. They loved each other. They were totally devoted to each other. Yeah. Well, that's, that's powerful for like a child to see yeah, your father and with your mother that's a very important wise words from your dad there yeah so we kind of went through all of the different years um they did have a, a little boy um that had a tragic um ending too mm -hmm. he drowned in a stock tank when he was um oh i think he was gosh. two and a half wow. uh years old mm -hmm. so an older brother of yours uh yeah he was just one he was just right before me so okay so okay. he passed away, and um, again, you were one of you're one of nine. Correct. Okay. Um, but that too, um, mm. in in fact, it was uh, really neat. They they asked, "How do you go on after the loss of a child?" People asked, and Dad said, "You look to God and keep going." Right. So. Mm. Yep. So very fortunate to have such a loving family. Wow. So just different pictures. Well, Kathy, what was it like growing up? You grew up on a farm, or did you grew up in town here? No, or? we grew up on a farm okay. um, out by Hart. Is in that fact, the of it? yep. There's the okay. picture of the farm that we grew up on. That's quite a garden there. It, it is, and uh, so we. What did you grow there? Uh, all of our vegetables and stuff. So mom canned everything, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so that kept uh, the girls very busy. Okay. And uh, I had brothers, yep. so that were around, so they got to do the outside work. We had to do the inside work mm -hmm. and um, weed the garden. <laughs> uh, a household of nine kids, wow, that uh, must have been uh, busy days. It was, you know, and we all worked together really well and yeah. and we never thought anything of it. That was just life, you know. Wow. You all worked together and 
nobody quit working until it was all done. Right. So, yeah. Kathy, can you show us some of the pictures now here in Rushford, uh, Minnesota? If, if, and by the way, folks, if you haven't been to Rushford, you need to swing through. Great community here in Southeast Minnesota, beautiful. But there's a, a celebration every summer. Correct. Is it uh, Rushford Rush Days? Rushford Days, okay. Mm -hmm. And I think we have some pictures of your dad, uh, Willie. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Look at we that do. Look at that. So this is an amazing picture of dad. That was his uh, one of his favorite tractors, his uh, Farmall. MD. Now, you're not selling that tractor on the auction, are you? No, I don't believe so. I think one of the grandkids um, actually purchased this. So what we did with um, all of Dad's equipment is we um, made sure that any of the children or grandchildren that were interested in it, they had first, sure, first sure. dibs on it. Awesome. So they've all purchased what they wanted, and nice. then uh, the rest is and history. We have, we kinda, is it 10 or 12 tractors, um, roughly? Yeah, it could be. Something like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, again, we'll hop out and look at some of the equipment folks, but it, it really uh, cool stuff out here. And wow. Dad's looking sharp there driving. Yep. <laughs> hey, yep. He beautiful. was pretty proud of that. Big smile on his face. That's awesome. And he, that was, he would drive in the parade pretty much every year? Yes. The only year that he didn't drive in the parade um, was this year. And I actually have a picture of him. I took him in my Ranger this year because it, he was having trouble getting up on a tractor. Okay. So, but he still wanted the parade, and yeah. so um, all the children and grandchildren all show up, and great grandchildren, to help with the parade. And wow. each are one they, has their tractor that they're going to drive. Oh, they drive. Oh, oh nice. yes. Oh, yes. So the whole family is. The you whole guys family. Are, you guys are part of the Rush for Day history here. Yes. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, those are great pictures. Yeah. So here's a picture Dad uh, had redone his. Uh, is that the international picture? Yes, yep. So he was pretty happy about that. Are you guys selling that one on the auction? Or yes. Or you are? Okay. Yep. Wow. Well, we'll get a closer look at that one, folks. Those international pickups are great fun to run across. What an awesome book. Yes. And Kathy, did you say now, were you here helping your dad? Yes. The last Yes, year? so um, when COVID hit, uh, it actually was almost a blessing because my father was needing more help mm. to be at home. So I actually worked from here okay. and took care of him and then just worked remote. Wow. And then when we were gonna go back to the office, I decided it was time for me to retire so I could sure. spend all my time with dad. Nice. So he had me out in the shop uh, helping him fix things. Which um, we will go take a look out yeah. there folks. So but... I was so not mechanical, but dad never lost his patience. He would tell me which way to turn the bolt because <laughs> I had no idea. And he was uh, with uh, your grant, was it Tucker? Yes. They would kind of restore things, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Tucker and dad restored things, but then uh, Tucker had gotten a full-time job, so he wasn't able to be here as okay. much. Okay. So dad and I would go out in the shop and he had, he was the brains, I was just his hands. He would tell me what to do nice. and not uh, do it. So I'm sure, Kathy, he just loved having you help him like that spend yeah. time yeah That's we did we had awesome. some good times what a blessing yes awesome well these are uh, just fantastic uh, bits of the family history thank you for showing us kathy uh and here again here's here's dad willie uh, 93 years old he was in december when he passed yes wow there's that smile and there again and uh just thinking about your dad what again what else would you what, what jumps to mind you think about your dad, Kathy? I think just how happy he was. Or mm. he and he always made it. It's kind of funny. One of my um, uh, nieces or nephews always said, uh, "You know, Grandpa always made you feel like you were his favorite." Mm. It, it's no matter which one of them it was. Wow. So he always made everybody feel very special. And so, how many grandkids? Did he, did he have? We will need to edit this because <laughs> That's a lot. I think it was 133 grandchildren and great-grandchildren, but I'll need wow. to get the exact number. 100 plus, safe to say? Yes. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Uh, just amazing. Well, what a life. What an amazing life. And again, uh, I imagine uh, a lot of former customers. Yes. Uh, he probably stayed connected with over the years. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yep, he's had a lot of good customers, a lot of people that were great friends of his. Yep. And Kathy, what are you, as the as the machinery here, some of the, the machinery that probably you grew up around as you see it, you know, 
getting ready to sell in the auction here. Um, memories, good memories of the equipment, or days gone by, or good memories. Yeah. It's always it's uh, been we've been very blessed to have such a solid family and to have a mom and dad that were right here for yeah. us. And and even I always felt it was um, so important. Most of our kids and grandkids have all grown up, and great grandkids have grown up around the area. Yeah, and so they all knew them. They knew them. It wasn't just a once in a while. You once know, stop and see them once a year. They actually knew um, mom and dad and would stop in all the time and visit with them. Wow. And, yeah. Can't put a price tag on that, can you? No, no. That's awesome. Well, Kathy, thank you for the kind of the backstory on your dad, uh, Willie Bunky here and Bunky Sales. And um, can we go out and take a look at some of the machinery now? Sounds good. All right. All right, folks, we're out on the yard. We're going to get a close-up look at some of the machinery on the, on the sale here coming up. And by the way, that is an international pickup over there and some just fantastic uh, vintage tractors. But we're going to visit a little more with the family here, uh, Willie's family. Of course, Kathy. Thank you again, Kathy, for showing us some of the information inside. Great stuff. And so this is great-grandson Tucker. Yep. And Tucker, you, you're right around Rod, or Rushford here? Yep. Okay. And, folks, we're going to talk to Tucker in a little bit. Tucker worked with his grandpa, our great grandpa Willie, on this restoring this uh, International 560, and he had it running here, and it just it sounds awesome. You did a heck of a job there, Tucker. So we'll talk specifically in a minute, but I want to introduce everybody here. We have Kathy's brothers. This is Don and Dwayne, right? Yep, that's right. Okay, and Don, you are the you're the oldest. I'm the eldest. Oldest yep. boy. Okay. And Dwayne, and then we have this is Kathy's son Travis. Yep. Tucker's father. Yep. And folks, I need to introduce you to a key value member of our machinery P team, Steve, managing our auction. And Steve, I'm going to let you do your last name pronunciation again. Steve Zorodnik. Zorodnik, right. There and Steve, go. welcome to our machinery P team. He's Thank our auction you. manager uh, down here helping us today. And so uh, Don and Dwayne, um, so what, can you tell us a little bit about the, the dealership that they had at Bunky Sales? Like when did that kind of get started? Well, back in the late 60s, well, we're we'll say about 67, 68, uh, he started helping my uncle Earl Bunky selling Pats. Pats was green back then. Pats was green? Pats was green, yep. I did not know that. Not blue back then. Oh, okay. And then after about two years of selling alone, or selling with my uncle Earl, he went off on his own. Okay. Uh, uncle Earl didn't, he was a small engine dealer, so sure. Pats didn't really fit in with his line. And by this time, they had turned blue. Okay. So uh, we started out selling pads, then added companies like DeLaval, started building complete barns, dairy sure. barns when sure. they were popular. Yep. And then... Uh, and that was a Main Street uh, location right in Rushford here, Bunky yeah, Sales? Originally, not Bunky Sales. When Earl Sales and Service was downtown. Okay. But when Bunky, when my dad took it over, then we moved out west to Hart. Okay. Two miles west of Hart. Gotcha. Okay. And Dwayne, what do you remember about the, those early days when, when dad got selling machinery? Well, I, I was, uh, I had worked for a concrete company, so then I came on and I kind of was doing a lot of the concrete uh, end of the, okay. putting in the barn cleaners sure. and pouring concrete sure. for new buildings. And that was kind of my, you know, my thing. De La Val milkers, I installed them. Right. So. But, uh, so dad wasn't buying uh, and selling used tractors. He was... No, no, we never were in that business. Okay. And then through the years, he then moved on to selling Wick and Hool? Yep, back in the middle middle to later 80s, uh, a company by the name of WIC, Wick, yep. out of Drummondville, Quebec, started making feed carts and bedding choppers for in-barn sure. work, and so he started selling or actually distributing, which means that he set up dealers in the five, five Midwest states, Okay. and then he would uh, the product would come here and he would deliver it. And uh, okay. in the late 80s, then he, he got acquainted with the other Canadian company called Pool, okay, which is uh, in Drummondville, Quebec. Yep, right next to Wickham, Quebec, which is where Wick was at. Okay, and then he convinced me to quit driving over the road, and I started working with him as a distributor. Okay, and we we set up. Uh, oh, God, we must have had about 60, 60 dealers total that we would call on in, in your five states. Five state area: Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, the Dakotas, and the Dakotas. Okay, yeah. gotcha. <clears throat> okay. And what do you guys remember about uh, your dad? Uh, I mean, just tell me about him. Well, how about how about business wise? Uh, he liked well, obviously loved working with he farmers. Liked to, he liked to, I guess, be in front of uh, people to sell things. Yeah, that was kind of his drive. Okay. 
<laughs> nice. And I guess he was good at it. You know, yeah. we have to we have to say that. He, uh, How many years was he <clears throat> in business, roughly? Uh, well, as a dealer, are you talking? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, like I said, it was been from the '60s up until he, he just quit selling. In fact, he never really did quit selling. Uh, he, <laughs> if somebody he was, wanted something he had, he'd still get out okay. and sell it to him. So, Even yeah. in his 90s, Yes, huh? yes, he wow. was, yes. Now, you guys were mentioning that uh, on his trips to local farmers and such in the area here, mm -hmm. he would have his truck and uh, would occasionally come home with some treasures. <laughs> well, he More than occasionally? Yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah, think so? didn't always agree with the treasures, but ah. they, they all had potential in his mind. Okay. So, he had a little enclosed trailer. I know one time he came home and I was kind of surprised when he opened the end gate and rolled out a little Volkswagen Beetle. A Volkswagen I, I, Beetle? I don't, for one thing, I don't know how he got out of the car after he drove it in there. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, I never knew he was even interested in them. Well, I think... I and think the little cub that sitting in the barn was the same thing. Oh, okay. I, I don't know that my mother was all that happy with him sometimes with, with some of them treasures, but he certainly was. Well, that, yeah, that didn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, now, guys, you got to tell me the story. Uh, uh, the first tractor on the farm when you guys were growing up, what, what was that, Don? When we were growing up? Yeah. Now, you got to remember that parents would be put in jail today for treating us like they did. <laughs> I started driving. I was a twin, okay? Okay, yep. And so my dad was so happy, he went out and bought a brand new Oliver 88 okay. from the local co-op back then. And this was, was you, in honor of you, because the of, twins being born? Because of the twins. Okay. And so when I was, I remember uh, six years old, I was pulling a three-bottom plow with that Oliver 88. At six? <laughs> six wow. years old. So when you say, when did we start driving yeah. tractors? Get busy, kid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You couldn't even step the clutch. You had to shut the switch off if you got into trouble. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they were kind of strong clutch. Now tell me the story about a, a particular Alice Chalmers tractor that I know you guys both loved a ton. Alice. Or the W9. Uh, the W9, oh. oh, the W9. Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Well, all these years that we farmed, and you know, we ran quite a few acres, up, up to 2,200 acres. Okay. For a number of years, so we had hired men. We had my twin brother and I and Dwayne would we'd skip school to do farm work. When, you know, spring and fall. Of course, they'd arrest you for doing that today, probably. But but it was acceptable back <laughs> right, then. Right, right, right. You know, and so we, we had all these Olivers that we'd run. In fact, the most recent one we had gotten was a 19 or 1850 Oliver. Okay. And uh, and one day, Dad shows up with this with this old W9 yep. red tractor. First red tractor that we had on the place. Okay. And it was one of the most despicable things to drive. Because it, <laughs> it, it, first of all, it didn't go very fast in the field with the, pulling a drag with the, or a disc yeah. with a drag. Yeah. And of course, they'd never heard of power steering and such things. So it wasn't the, it wasn't yeah, no. one that we wanted to get Many on happy drive. memories, right? <laughs> That's all good. Now, let's stay with red and uh, tell us about the first uh, new International that uh, was that one of you guys that bought or yeah, no my twin brother bought that your twin brother okay. he came back from the Navy it would have been about 72 okay and uh, he was he had his own farm by that time was buried yep and uh, he was on his way with a couple of kids already so he went up to Yankel implement Lewiston came back with a brand new 1086 International nice duels everything nice. twelve thousand dollars <laughs> That's what we paid for that. That's what Which probably that felt like about 200000 well, back then. Well, it seemed like a lot of money yeah. then. Don't yeah. seem like much today. Right, right. No. But that was a pretty sweet... Uh, that was really a nice tractor. Yeah. Nice to drive. Plenty of power. Had 135 horse. Yeah. And, of course, it was bigger than anything we'd ever had. Yeah. And he had bought other equipment like the disc and the chisel plow right. to go along with that. So. But you guys, uh, a lot of Oliver tractors when you were growing up. But now, as I look around, and we'll, we'll show them here, but many uh, classic farm all tractors. So what, when did Dad kind of switch to be the well, red collector? kind of went off the rails, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I really can't say the why yeah. of it. Yeah, um, it just kind of happened. The only the only thing that I can understand is that uh, he kept his business with with Oliver Local, and then the co-op went out of business. Right. And so then, you know, those... Supporting the local and, dealer, right, right, right. And so it was about that time, you know, that we started seeing these red things show up. And it was really more of a, uh, started out that he was using it himself out of his, far, out of his sure, farm. Sure, sure. And then the next thing we see is painting them up and 
not able to use them anymore. <laughs> so <he laughs> right. Job, you know? yeah. And they would show up but in the Rushford. It, it uh, had to be his pastime. He never yeah. really had a hobby. You know, him and mom yeah. got married. To, she was 15, he was 17. So, you know, they didn't grow up like, uh, yeah. of course, we were told many times that things were different back then. Right. <laughs> and I know they were. Yes, yes, but yes. There's a long, sad story I could tell you, but I probably shouldn't bore you with that. So. Uh, you know, well, that. now yeah. on the topic of uh, tinkering and restoring, let's pivot back here to great-grandson Tucker. So, Tucker, how old are you now? I am 24. 24. And you grew up right, right here in, the, in yep. the area. Yep. And so you spent a lot of time with your great grandpa a lot really. yep working on tractors like this oh uh, yeah like how many tractors would you guess you guys worked on uh, i don't know at least six probably just kind of uh, chip, chipping away yeah okay. then implements painted plows seed well, drill what was it like working with with great grandpa willie it was awesome yeah he and taught he, me a lot. Like, like, what did he teach you, Tucker? Oh, how the, how they work, I guess. How to restore them back to kind of what they came from factory. And he was, uh, you were saying, we'll talk about that chrome stack there in a minute, but <laughs> he, originalness was big for him? Yep. Yeah. He loved keeping everything original. Right. He, and now tell the story about the 560 here. Is you, you... It was your idea on the chrome stack and you kind of surprised him with it? Yep. So I'm, I like tractor pulling, I like loud noise, everything like that. Yep. So Grandpa would always, Grandpa would always take a nap at noon. Okay. And then uh, he came out one day, he always drove around on his scooter. Yep. And uh, he came up to it, then he just looked at the stack, he looked at me, and he that ain't no muffler. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet it grew on him, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. He yeah. loved it after a while. Wow. When so I you... started it every once in a while, right before I'd shut it off, I'd just give it a quick little, and oh, he'd yeah. just smile and shake his head. <laughs> yeah. It seems, all of, it seems like your great-grandpa was smiling a lot. Oh, yeah. He was always happy. Mm. Always. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool. You got to spend the time with him and, and soak up that knowledge, Tucker. Uh, yep. And again, the 560, this is your tractor. You're yep. not, don't sell this one. Nope, right, this right. one is not ever Keep getting this, sold. You take this in the Rushford uh, days, yep. right? Yep. Okay, folks, uh, if you're in the Rushford, Southeast Minnesota area, catch the parade, see Tucker driving this baby. Good stuff. Let's pivot around now to Tucker's dad, Travis. <laughs> so your yep. grandpa. Yep. And you're, you're Kathy's son. Yep, the oldest okay. boy. Yep. So when you say grandpa, what, what pops to your mind? Uh, Travis you know grandpa grandpa and grandma both were wonderful people family people as um, the Stories my uncles yeah. have said you, you know, they do anything for people. I mean it just that and like they said the, the grandpa loved his farming and yeah. Ducks geese poultry, you, you know, I, I remember I, helping grandpa as a kid when we were little, you know splitting stack firewood or split firewood, yeah. you know, they'd call Saturday mornings and uh, see if we could help for the day and my middle brother Trevor, he always had something going on. He said if he knew we were working on firewood, so he was he was always busy. He never really liked the firewood aspect of it, but okay. you still know, doesn't. still still does it. But as he got older, too, he helped Grandpa do a lot on the farm mix and feed yeah. and stuff. Too, I I did a lot of that too with with the M that's going to be sold on the auction. Sure, you know he's held and that tractor for many years, mm. ground ground a lot of feed and stuff. I used to ride the school bus after school up to the farm in Hart okay. um, when they were farming up there and I'd, I'd run the M with the disc after oh, school for a, for a couple oh, hours oh, oh, and that's no. actually actually where I met my wife. No. She was babysitting for okay. the couple that lived in that far, farmhouse at that time. You met your wife so. when you were disking with an M? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. The I've story heard a lot goes. of stories, So Travis. the story goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to hear this one. More details, Well, please. she this tractor was sexy. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. Pretty good well, she was She was babysitting for the neighbors over there. And gotcha. then would, and, and what I said, right, the school bus up there, and her and the, the kids would be playing outside, and I seen her in the yard out there. And Who's that good-looking guy in that M there? That's huh? right. That's yeah. I think that's what she thought. Awesome. She maybe yeah. still don't think that, but uh, may, maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe it was the M. Right, maybe it was the M. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that's so no, I got a lot of fond memories with the machinery and stuff like that too. Some of the stuff that Grandpa's had. It sounded for like years. he just enjoyed uh, spending time with the kids and grandkids and oh, uh, yep. great grandkids. Loved, loved family. Yeah, yep, like our, our get-togethers at Christmas, Thanksgiving. It was. It's not uncommon to have eighty to hundred people wow. in the house, and he always just, said he was always so blessed. Yeah, yeah, to have yep. the family he's got. Yeah, yep. in my time helping him, he was patient. <laughs> I don't know how he was when you guys were growing up. Uh, I guess he was pretty patient there too. Yeah. yeah. I pushed him a few times. Yeah. <laughs> just just a few times, Dwayne. Uh, yeah. We thought out he had buttons. <laughs> hey, we all got buttons. Yeah, right? we do. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's uh, can, let's go take a look at some of the machinery. One on other the person you probably should talk to too, Pete. Here, the last few years is. Um, probably talk to my mother a little bit too with all the machinery and stuff that she got to tinker with with grandpa yes let's do that kathy now kathy we, we were talking inside the last yes. you were on the farm here helping dad yeah and so this shop. this was actually the shop that yep. you were that you were yep. in so it's a heated shop so it was really okay. nice so dad and i'd come out here in the mornings and work on things and we actually rebuilt a couple of the um bedding uh, choppers okay uh, yep it was a tractor that we rebuilt for Every time I'd get in a, in a jam, we'd kind of wait for Duane or one of the boys to come back through yeah. to try and help me out, <laughs> well, which was quite a bit of the time, quite frankly. Your dad, uh, was he, and I'm guessing, patient? He probably just loved having you. Oh, he, he was. He was so help. patient. I don't know how in the heck he could stand it because yeah. I didn't have a clue. I was very clueless on mechanics and still am. <laughs> well, boy, I, I, what what a what a blessing to spend that time with your dad and, and yep. be there to help him keep him out in the shop. That must have made him just happy to be out around the equipment and the tractors. And, yes. Yeah. Yes. One and of the so. last big projects he did actually was uh, with Dwayne and yeah. Pepper and the Oliver. Donnie uh, was in on this, uh, taking apart the uh, Oliver OC3 and uh, putting that all back together. He had it all torn apart. Go ahead. Mm. Yep. And uh, Dwayne actually found this for him. Yeah, where where did you find this, Dwayne? Uh, I was building a building for a guy down by Brownsville. Okay. And he came driving in one day with this thing on the trailer, okay. and he had just he had taken a building down in Lacrosse and found it buried under a bunch of stuff. Huh. And they figured it had been in there for thirty some years. And uh, so I asked him if he wanted to sell it, and he did at that time. And yep. Then he called me a year later and said that he would take it. Yeah, I, I took Dad down there to look at it. Okay. He, he was like a kid in the candy store. Wow. <laughs> had to have it. You know. Had to have it. Because we had one just like this when oh, we you grew did. up on the farm. Oh, okay. Identical sure. to this little right. guy. Again. So I, we brought it home, and yeah, I, I think we worked on it almost two years, probably. Two off years. And on, you know. Okay. Was the motor stuck on this, or the clutch was stuck clutch. on clutch. 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 Well, it's beautiful, guys. And uh, are you are you selling this on the auction? This yes. is selling? It is yes. selling. Okay, yes. folks. You want to talk about a cool vintage rig here, Oliver OC3. You just don't see them every day. You know, maybe you got some family history. Maybe you had one around the farm or neighbors had it. But uh, wow, very cool and uh, cool to hear the story on this one. So, all right, guys, let's go uh, explore the machines here and see what we got. All right, folks. Now this is an item on our machinery feed monthly online auction. You don't see every day an international 82 combine. Now, Tucker, Tucker, you just sent me some cell phone video of this thing actually yep. in action. That was recently, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple years ago. A couple of years ago. Okay. And it, it still turns on. It worked today if you needed it to. Yeah. What, what was it like running it? It was awesome. Yeah. Feel like That's... you were in a time machine going back? <laughs> yeah. Pulling that thing? I... Granted, I had a little bit more powerful tractor, but yeah. so I wasn't exactly the yeah. same. But what were you pulling it with? I was pulling it with the International 766. 766 pulling an 82. We're going back in time. Boy, that's just a beautiful, beautiful rig there. Let's walk down the line here now, <laughs> Tucker. Is the 606 on the auction? 806. Oh, it's an 806. Okay, yep. gotcha. 806 gas. It's a gas. That I don't. I haven't drove it much, but I remember, and I can send you pictures too, I got pictures of Grandpa on a bale of hay with it. I okay. was raking the hay okay. right ahead of him, and he was actually pulling one of them balers that are going to be on the okay. auction too. Okay, 
Well, 806 is a, a reliable workhorse over the years oh, on yeah. the farm here. So let's uh, hop over. We've got uh, a line of equipment. We've got a, a Super H here with a sickle mower. What do you know about that one, guys? That's, my dad bought that tractor from Grandpa. Um, he is selling the sickle mower. Oh, so you're so, keeping the tractor. I'm keeping, I'm keeping you're the keeping tractor, the Super H. Good. Yep, okay, yep, I'm good. keeping the Super H. But you're selling the sickle mower. The sickle mower is going to be sold okay. and, and stuff. And I guess I remember Grandpa bought that pod. I bet he still owns that for probably 25, 30 years or better. Okay. And remember, he, yeah, that's what he used to cut his hay with. Nice. Is with the sickle and, mower. And your mom, Kathy, was telling us that uh, all the kids and grandkids, great grandkids, had a chance to buy what they wanted out of the yep, line. They, of yep, they had to. Uh, um, a local Hamble equipment come over here and looked at a lot of the restored tractors right. and some of the machineries and they put what they thought would be right. marketable prices right. on them and then grandkids, well, brothers, sisters, family got sure. all the chance to buy anything sure. that they wanted to first. Nice. So I ended up buying three, three tractors nice. from home. I, just, I, I probably didn't need them. But they're, they're memories, and they can told my mom and my wife who isn't, once they're gone, they're gone. You're not, you're yeah. not going to get them you back. You can't really put a price tag on those and, memories. And Grandpa, Grandpa took a lot of pride in what he had fixed right. up right. and right. stuff like that. Like, I was telling you, like, on the Oliver 62, I'd, nev I'd never driven that tractor. But I remember when they lived in Hart, when we were little kids, they'd go down into the pole shed, and, and it was covered up with old lumber and stuff. And... And, and, you're, and you bought the 60? And I bought the 60. Okay. Yeah. So the 60 is not on the auction, but yeah. thank you for bringing it out to show us, Travis. Yeah, you bet. Very cool. Now, yeah. the international pickup, this is on the auction? Yeah. Okay. So it's a 1210 with a bed on the back. Now, what's the story on this one, Travis? He, he bought that from a local guy in town that had it for sale. And him and Tucker tinkered a little bit on the bodywork and touched up a couple spots okay. on it. Um, got it running, and, and then Grandpa had that old flat bag around from actually when he used to sell equipment. So then they fabricated, blasted that, put some new lumber boards on it, fabricated that flat bed onto there. So, so this, yeah. this baby was uh, part of Monkey Sales. It was. Yeah, yeah. Get all bedding choppers on it. Yeah. Bedding choppers. Yeah, there yeah. you go, folks. Of course, uh, almost 50 years old now, 1973 model. Uh, just don't see many of those international, so hop in and click the bid button. That's a pretty cool rig there. And what do we got? Uh, is the IH truck in the back still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 What do we know about that one?
you needed help, I'd switch over. Nice. And did you make, you got the 560 ready in time? I got the 560 done a week before the parade. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, what do we got next here? Farmall B. The B? Okay. Yep. He just bought this from Hamill Equipment. He had always wanted a B. Why? Wow. He, he just talked for years about wanting a B? He just always wanted, I don't know, did he have one? He had one, but he had all the other letter series. He had a Cub, he had an A, he had a B, and then uh, the C. So he just, it was the he other letter it. series. Yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. So this came from... He just bought it this summer, so okay. I don't know much about it, but it... Yeah, it probably yeah, made him really pretty good. happy to, to buy it, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Well, it sounds good. So we got an M right here. Tucker, did you... Uh, Paint this one? I painted that one, yeah. Again, beautiful job. What what can you tell us about this baby? It's a nice running track here, that. It runs nice? Starts really nice. Well, it's a gem that he's had for years. Yeah. You know, that yeah, when they were farming hard. Yeah, okay, nice. Yeah, think of the work that baby did over, oh, over the decades, huh? Yep, yep. yep. Got, got his money is worth out of it. Sound a lot of feet. Did a lot of field yeah. work. Grandpa used this barrel for. Now is this the M that you were driving the disc yep. on? That yeah, this, this, this is it. This is it. Yeah, yeah. Go stand by it, Travis. I need I'm... one big picture here. <laughs> there you go. That's the M that sealed the deal right there, yeah. folks. Awesome. Awesome. Good deal. Now, some small equipment, but boy, just beautiful condition. This uh, 37 rake. I don't see many like that. Um, and it is in working condition. Everything works on it if a person wanted to use it. And it, has it been out in the field the last? Grandpa loaned it out to a neighbor right across the road here okay. about probably four or five years ago. Okay. And he just went break some waterways with it. Wow. Other than that, that's, that's beautiful. Grandpa has always wants to paint it. It's not getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Beautiful condition. You know, how long has this been in the family? Quite a while, or? I know he's had it for a long time. I don't. I painted this too. I, yeah. I pretty much know about this. And we went through and rebuilt the wheel bearings on them. And stuff. Okay. And it's got hydraulic lift. A lot of this equipment and stuff Grandpa had laying around in the yeah. weeds and stuff, and like he said, just, just he's had it for a while, and then yep. it's like, you know what? You get some a piece done, and then they go dig another project right. out of the weeds and bring it up, and they yeah. said they always have a them. always have a project. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, he always liked to He was had projects till he was 150 years oh. old. <laughs> yeah, kind of nice to have a variety of projects yeah. too, tractors, yeah. but then yeah. mix in a spreader or a rake. Yeah. Yeah. So now is the. Uh, is the Oliver here? Is this on the auction or not? Yeah, it's on the this is selling. Auction. Okay. So Grandpa just got this. He bought it. I want to say like two years ago. Okay. Um, and my grandma. This is actually her first thing she painted, I believe. Ah. Now, how would you critique your grandma's paint job on here? Did What's she, that? Did she do a good job? Did that? Yeah. Right. It looks we won't good to me. Her. We won't critique yeah. her too bad. <laughs> Ah, that looks that looks great. Awesome. A little piece of Oliver history here, folks. Jump in and get that. Now the two the, the plows are not on the auction, right? Well, Tucker no. and I each bought one of those. Okay, plows. good. You keep those yeah, in the family. Yeah. And Tucker, you uh you did the work on the on the plow? On both of them. Both of them? Yep. Okay. Both of them. That was I think that was one of the first things I ever painted for grandpa, and that's what I always pulled through the rush for days parade. Ah so. behind your five sixty now? Yep. Nice, nice. Yep. And the Oliver plow here, beautiful. Tucker, you do a great job. You've got great I, skill there. I want to use that plow, but I think I think Grandpa would cringe if he seen me use it. Yeah, he, well, <laughs> I think Grandpa's smiling down at whatever you decide to, to do, Tucker. And a little International 103, this is on the auction? Yes. yes. Okay, yep. beautiful. And you guys worked on this one too, Tucker? Uh, this one was actually done. This, I, this I was done? This okay. Well, folks, you want a sweet-looking International 103, you won't find a nicer one than right here. It's on the auction. And then we have a little drill here. Any uh, back history on this one, guys? Um, I, don't, I don't 
snow much. I know it's had it for a long time. This was one that was in the, when I came down last time was back in the shed? Yep, yes. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, I painted this one, talk about a job. <laughs> Not one of your favorites? No, no. Why was that, Tucker? We had everything, all the seed dips tore off of it. Oh, God. A lot of bolts. A lot of bolts. Lots of, yeah. Okay. You know as well as I do how rusty bolts come off. Uh, they, uh, <laughs> yes. I see. That's a lot of fond memories there. Huh? Oh yeah, okay. that was still fun. <laughs> you bet. All right, let's hop over here, guys. We got a, an old. It's an international loader. Yep. Yep. And I don't know what it's off of for sure. That sat back there. Okay. The longest. Well, time. hard to find old loaders that are. Yeah, an old trip bucket. So there you go. Just... And so we. Grandpa, once he had it, he was kind of a hoarder. He didn't really get rid of anything. Yeah. He was more of a collector. A collector, yeah. right. <laughs> some right. of the old That's all good. And he just, he enjoyed all that yep. stuff. Yeah, so. And then another little yep. spreader here, international spreader. And now this plow is this not plow selling. This plow has already, already been sold as okay. well. Okay. Yep. So we have another uh, little drill he, here. He just bought this green drill from a guy south of town here. Okay. Probably will last summer too. And it's actually, I think, the same drill is the one that they fixed up that's across oh, the driveway okay. and stuff so it's newer and he had, a little newer but you already newer. had tucker's time uh penciled out on this thing yeah i, oh, I yeah. enjoyed the first one so much <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah how about this uh this plow is this selling yep yep this is that's selling okay and then of course the crawler we looked at that the oliver oc3 just fantastic yep. very unique item there and there's tucker's 560 again uh not on the auction, but again, seen every year in the Rush for Days Parade, pulling that plow. When is the Rush for Days Parade? What time of summer is what that? Is it? It's uh, the third, third weekend in July, yes. second or third weekend second in July. Third, July. Middle of July? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, is the is the uh, the uh, the baler, the 595, is that on the auction? Yes. Okay. And that, one of them was the parts baler. Yeah, are there two of them? There are two of them. Yep. Are they both selling? No, no, I don't know. I just think just this one? the one baler is selling. Yeah, okay. Join, join, just the one baler is selling, right? Just, just, just one. Yep. Just, just one. Okay. Tucker, had you has this thing been in the field or? Yep, and that's the one I sent you some pictures. Okay. Um, of okay. Grandpa pulling that with the 806. Okay, the 806. Eight. Okay. And the, this plow, the International, is this on the sale? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I remember I've used this plow a couple times. But my uncle Tyler bought some land east of town here. Yep. He just wants some sod broke up. And so, Got the job done. Yep. Nice. Did you pull it with your 560? Nope. I nope. pulled it with the 766. 766. That was before we had the 560. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> How about the sickle here? Is this on the auction? Yep. Both of them are on the auction. Okay. Well, folks, you can see good variety of equipment, uh, history, vintage tractors. Uh, manure spreaders, that great Oliver crawler. Guys, thanks for the uh, the tour here. Is, is this all the machinery that we, we do have two more M's. Okay, let's Back go take there. a look. Two more M's? Okay. Are these, these on the this is on the auction yeah. okay so the Oatana were there two of these or just, just one. one just, just one? one okay okay there you go a little classic Oatana swather how about the bobcat you guys nope. keeping that yeah that's going in no, that's not for sale not for sale okay and that works great we just used it two two summers ago in swat mode okay I actually got the joys of driving that nice and what was it like driving it Smooth as it's, silk. It's interesting. Yeah, interesting. But it got the job done, right? Yep. Nice. Okay. A few more tractors here, folks. So we've got a MD. That is not on the sale. Not on the sale. Okay. One, one of the grandkids bought that. Yep. One of my cousins bought nice. it. Nice. And what do we got here? These last two. Last two M's. One of all two M's. Okay. Grandpa bought them from a guy. Passed away or whatever. Yep. Um, they, they dug them out of the weeds. Tucker and Grandpa got them both running. Okay. So, but it's probably been three, four years maybe since they have ran. 
So these would have been a couple M's, Tucker, that you guys would have worked on? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. There you go. Possibilities, folks. A couple classic uh, Farmwell M's. Ready to do some work on. And Guys, thank you for the tour. And uh, also, thank you for the insights yes. about uh, Grandpa and Great Grandpa here. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I suppose, how are you guys feeling like uh, this equipment now? Could, could go to buyers anywhere over the country or in Canada. And you guys did a lot of work on it. I mean, kind of make you smile to think new life out there. Oh, it does. It, it, it does. Yeah. It, it'll be it'll be sad to see Peyton and Grandpa's collection grow up and stuff. But you know what? I hope I hope the next people get as much joy out of it and cherish it as, as much as he did. Right. He, right. he really enjoyed doing doing that. Right. Well, yeah. folks, if you get a piece of the equipment from Willie Bunky here, you are getting uh, some real history from Southeast Minnesota. And Tucker and Travis, thanks, thanks again for giving us the tour. Yep. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.